In the centre of town, the Mario Filinson National Art Gallery is housed within the City Hall, a building which has its own interesting history and heritage. We've been inviting you into a gallery space and teaching you a little bit more about the artists which are featured here. Today it's the turn of Rude Sindomania and Jacoba Seguri. Today we're joined by Paul Koskeri. Hi Paul. Hi, He's the man. president of the Fine Arts um, Association. And obviously it's great to have you here today. Now for me it was quite relevant, I think, to have an artist like yourself, a contemporary artist who, you know, is very much expressionist and have your opinion on the artist, the most expressionist artist really that we have here in the Mario Filinson National Gal Gallery. And it's Jacobo Saguri and, and as you know he was a very expressionist uh, uh, painter. You can see in, in the painting behind you how he exaggerated all the, the lines and and I'm looking at a, a drawing of this in, in the background there, and you can tell how the hands are distorted and enlarged, and how all the features, it, it's actually a bit uh, uh, comical, mm. uh, uh, caricaturist in a way, but how he handles the lines and he expresses his feelings in every single line he does, and that's something I love. An artist that was very much misunderstood and it was probably because of the way that he tackled figures and really sort of highlighted and was very much concerned about, uh, you know, the, the social compass and, uh, you know, people's standing and so on. And he, he loved drawing or making drawings of, of everyday people in, in, out in the street and especially the, the worse off people. So he was a guy that he had, some, had a social uh, comments to, yeah. to make and that's evident in his drawings you can see they they are all very sympathetic to his, his uh, uh, characters and this in fact is a study for his later work Los Olvidados and obviously working here with perspectives and you know and the forms but again the hands very much exaggerated and the feet and the feet as well reminds me a bit of Van Gogh the drawings he did of the uh, uh, people in, I can't remember where he went, that they were, they were, they were poor in existence. And uh, it reminds me of them, of that drawing. And what I love about this little vault as well is the great contrast, because if anybody has any doubt that uh, Jacobo, you know, didn't have the talent, we then move on to these great sketches, you know where we can really appreciate his skill, you know, when, when handling hands and feet. They're superbly done. I mean, these I love. They're all studies of the same feet, the right foot. And these, superb. So he could, in effect, draw extremely well, but when it came to his paintings, it was a different uh, uh, thing altogether. It was a conscious choice, wasn't it? Yeah. It was making a statement. <clears throat> And we do know that hands and feet are probably one of the hardest things for artists to tackle. I love doing them. <laughs> but that, that painting is superb. Eh? And that hand is extremely big. But it's a lovely, lovely painting. And it's in fact a campesino, you know, a worker of the field in Funchal, Madeira, where he was evacuated Lita, to. Yeah. So how much do you think, you know, the evacuation and having lived through the war actually played a part and influenced these artists here. I can't really tell, but it must have been important for him because uh, uh, any evacuation is an extremely important uh, uh, factor in one's life. And the fact that he was uh, evacuated to Funchal must have meant a lot for him. There he came across people like that, that person whom he, he, he loved drawing. And this one here, in fact, uh, a portrait of his mother perhaps looking quite stern, capturing it's, their it's her very, essence. It's a very touching portrait. You can feel the, the, the love he felt for her. And then that, that one up there, which is totally different, but it's still, he's an artist, and he's looking for a style and he's, he's experimenting. And I think in this little vault we're seeing, you know, the, the different phases and, and, and the different Absolutely. sort of like development that his perhaps career took him. I mean, this one, he's drawing, painting his own mother and he, he's really feeling for her. Then up, up there he's totally free and 
trying out the, the lights, light no? effects. Yeah. And then he comes to these, which are his more, you know, his more of a trademark of his, isn't it? I should say, time. more recognizable, definitely. And we see in La Caleta, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a place in Gibraltar that captures the interest of a lot of artists. In fact, we've got different um, examples of that here. It's quite a, uh, a unique place. Mm. And you see the figures are extra yes. large. They're enlarged. They're not exactly... You can tell his, his expressionist style there. I don't know whether that's a boy or a man. It looks like a like a dirty palette. I don't know why, but it mm. looks like a like a, a a restricted palette probably. That's strange to be used out outdoors, but they've got this tone to them. I don't know whether he glazed them at the end. Is he an artist that um, you've looked at I during have, your yeah. career? I have. I actually own a sketchbook of his, uh, a small sketchbook. I've always loved his drawings more than his paintings, but he's an, an artist that I particularly like. And this is another vantage point. I think these artworks also serve to to show us a changing landscape, or you know, a Gibraltar of of, of bygone days. Obviously, much more populated nowadays. The Caleta, and we we have those tents, La Barraca, which used to be quite commonplace. Then they, we don't normally we don't see them anymore in in, in Catalan Bay. Yeah. And the but fishing you can tell boats. how he distorts perspective. He does it, he uses it for his own uh, particular um, personal needs. You can tell that these figures are virtually the same size yes. as those, as that one. And there's a big distance there, that would be minute. Mm. But he doesn't care about that. And he gets the, the overall feel for the place, he, he's got it. See, these are what I like of him. These are sketchbooks. These are a, are a set of sailors, are probably sitting outside a pub, and he's captured the, the, the moment then. You can almost sense the way that he's coloured it in. But, it, but it's quite a, a well-finished piece, isn't it? It's, it's a study for, a, for yeah. a, a later painting, probably. That neck looks elongated, which is a, f a feature of mm. him. A bit like El Greco, he, he uh, the distortion, his, yeah. his distortion. Yeah, and even the features, not the, 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 the noses and the mouths yeah, and the chins. And that one is particularly interesting. Portrait of a man. That's probably cup. someone he knew well. I mean, you mentioned that you own his sketchbook, but do you think, you know, contemporary artists nowadays avail themselves of what there is here? as much as they could, perhaps? I don't know, uh, particularly the, this museum. It's a place that I, I, I would like to invite any, everyone in Gibraltar to come in. And when, if you're in town doing something, to come in and immerse yourself in this calmness. There's some lovely paintings here, and I do that uh, quite often. When I'm stressed and seeing clients or whatever, I come in here and all that stress dissipates, it goes away. And I think if you're an artist, you should come in and study the old masters. Mm -hmm. The lovely paintings here that you can just copy and, and learn from them. Even the building itself has a That's certain correct. gravitas, doesn't it, when you walk in. And you know, we are going to be bringing out some of the works we have, um, you, you know, as part this. of our collection to get things, things going. You know, yeah, moving. exactly, because we've got so much and at the end of the day it is about, you know, showing it and for people to be able to appreciate That's it. That's the idea. Now a very different artist, for the Sindomania. So Paul, quite a different artist, for the Sindomania, known mainly for his detailed work and his portraits of Gibraltar. And we've got some great examples. We've got here a view of Gibraltar Heights, you know, showing us when 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 it wasn't pedestrianised and cars were able to drive along Main Street. Something perhaps that you know the younger generation uh, might appreciate. And this one here called nearing the top, obviously, of the, of the cable car, which, which could, in theory, be a view, a photo that you could no, that capture view, that nowadays, you know? There. It's exactly. And this painting, in fact, won, won an award in its day as well. What surprises me of uh, Mania is his exquisite use of detail. You could see there the, the, the leaves on the trees. Uh, 
individually painted each one and it's evident in all the other paintings. He was a, a, a sack of detail. I remember those days where the, the harbour was full of uh, warships. And the reflection, no, the lights in, in, in the bay. The of the light from the top yeah. to the bottom is very nice. And we've got here another... La Caleta. Yeah, La Caleta once again, a very different... A, a total contrast from, from Asaguri. Asaguri, as you could see, he was involved in it. This one Much is, more picturesque, let's say. And it's a calm, yeah. calm painting. Probably a more true to nature. The perspective is, is correct. But I, 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 I particularly like expressionism yes. and I like when the artist puts part or a lot of himself in the painting. As opposed to just transcribing what's what visually seeing. there. This one here. The Elliot's column. Look at the detail, look at all It's the... just amazing, the cobblestones. You can actually picture yourself there, you can see that, where, where it is exactly. But look at all those details. Like you said earlier, no, you can... Each leaf has been individually painted. Flowers, the colours, yeah. So many shades of green going on, not to... It's amazing, eh? To have the patience to do that. I couldn't do that. I, I, I'd find a, a way of imitating those leaves in a quick way. Get a sponge and just do... Imagine yourself painting those leaves mm. one by one. And that was his style. I mean, yeah. you see it time and time again. This is one you particularly like. Yeah, it's a nice painting, this one. Although it says San Roque, it looks to me somewhere from Campamento, a view from Campamento. I lived in Campamento years ago, and I remember that exact view. And it takes me there. But it's a lovely depiction of the rock, the way it's been sort of... It's very, very... Uh, Quite nostalgic almost, not, not very dreamy. Too, very little detail. Yeah. The, the amount of time he spent on a painting given to detail, to depicting each leaf as he saw, it, saw them. It's something that I, I, like I said, I wouldn't do. I can't do. I haven't got the patience to do that, to literally go leaf by leaf by leaf. It's, it's something that is... Uh, do you think he was continuously challenging himself? We've got here a night scene as well, so they're working with, again, the shades and the darkness and the creating that detail, but taking it... Look at, look at the treatment of yeah. those branches there. Every little corner of the painting. You have to give him that. Yeah. Even if that's the only thing you can give him, but it's... It has a lot of uh, attention to detail. And here perhaps the, the influence of Constable. The reflection on the water mm. is very... Accomplished, yeah? Accomplished, yeah. He spent hours observing and then hours transposing that observation into the painting. And the value of having the National Gallery, Paul? Well, that's something that's extremely valuable, having all these artists and, and especially now the late Mario Phillison is here. It's, it's tantamount, it's, it's extremely important that we, we give credit to all these past masters. I'm watching Lenin Isud there in the background. But Mario Phillison, who recently passed away, to see his paintings here, and the fact that he struggled all his life for a national gallery, and it's a reality now. Well, Paul, lovely to have you with us, as lovely always. Lovely to be here, Davina. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you again. It's been very nice.